we've served 41,000 people to date. Um, so many of uh, so many people in coming in waves. You know, we've had four or five major waves of people arriving. We're kind of in a downturn right now, in a downslope, um, which is good because it means that we're able to kind of stabilize things, throw events like the one you see behind me, where we have a dancing empanada, uh, and have a little fun. What is going on behind you? Yeah, so Maria Empanada uh, came through and basically said we want to help out. Um, we've been looking for a way to work with them for some time. They helped us with our Christmas drive. And we thought, eh, that isn't, you know, that's cool. That isn't like screaming Maria Empanada. But one thing we hear over and over and over again is that, um, you know, it's very tough for some of, a lot of the newcomers, predominantly Venezuelan, to find food that they like in Denver. Um, and so they're very, you know, it's not exactly what you might think. And uh, we've had some people cook for them and we, they say, yeah, no, no, thank you. Um, not, not big into spicy food, um, no spice, very, very, very plain. Um, and so um, Maria and Panada, I would not call us plain, but they're not spicy. And so this is a bit of a taste of home for them and, and they're having a good time. What went into this? What is behind today? What kind of money or funding or? Yeah, um, I mean, food is one of the biggest costs that we've uh, ex you know expended over the last year. So we've spent about eight million dollars of the seventy million dollars that we've spent today has all gone toward food. So for them to come through and say, hey, for one day a week for the next couple of months, we got dinner. Don't worry about it. We're we're picking up the check. We'll come by. We'll prepare the food. It's a huge lift, and we're, we're super hopeful that other businesses will come through and say, uh, yeah, that looks like a lot of fun. How do we help? What was the total cost of this, and how long does it run? It's $25,000 in donations, and it goes through, I believe, the end of June, or until we run out of empanadas. I believe they're donating around 10,000 empanadas. And where did that money come from? They're donating it, Marie Empanada. That's so cool. It's really cool. Um, we, we love having them. Uh, Victor and Landon, they're all so wonderful. Um, they, they reached out to us months and months and months ago and said, we want to help, we want to do something. And it, it's tough, you know, from an equity concern because, you know, there was a point not too long ago, just a few months ago, where we had 5,000 people in shelter, right? And so it's really tough to figure out how do you serve 5,000 people in shelter on a given night? How do you make sure it's equitable? Now that things have slowed down, now that a lot of people have gotten into housing, um, now that we've kind of, we're about to roll out our new Denver Asylum Seekers program, um, we're able to, to put something like this into action. What is that new program? So the new program is essentially saying to everyone that is eligible, it means that these are folks who need, essentially their only pathway to work is they need to um, apply for asylum, wait five months, and then apply for a work permit. And if that to you sounds like that's crazy, that can't possibly be the process of getting a work permit, that is the federal process for getting a work permit and that is what we're stuck with. And so the, when we built this program, we built it around that six month time frame to say, okay, so these folks need six months all right, well, can't legally work. It's tougher and tougher right now to find under the table jobs in Denver just based on the sheer number of people we've seen over this last year and a half. What can we do? And so that's where we developed the program from. Let's get them into work. Um, well, and then we thought, well, even when we help them with work, what about the certifications? You know, maybe they're not OSHA certified, right? Well, we can do that too. And so we've just been on and on and on. We said, well, how do we get them around? We said, we'll call RTD. And we're like, let's get them a bus pass. Oh, well, how do they eat? And it's like, well, we'll give them a meal card. And so we figured that out. And so we're, we're rolling it out now. Um, we expect it to be around 800 people or so in the initial tranche. And uh, we're really excited to get started with it. What other challenges are still facing the city of Denver, though, when it comes to the response to new immigrants here? I mean, arrivals are still in an unpredictable factor, right? I mean, right now we're seeing a pretty slow amount, two, three buses arriving in the month of May, not very many. Um, you know, for context, in the month of December, we received 144 charter buses from Texas. We received 9, 10, 11 buses a day. That was not abnormal. I would sometimes get calls from reporters and they go, John, we heard, we heard five buses came in. I said, you're, you're wrong. It was, it was eight. It was nine. You know, it was like, and that was on a daily basis. Um, and so now when we're seeing that slowdown, it's a little easier, but we can't, you know, we can't um, control that. What we do know is that the summer for us is, is usually a little bit slower of a time. If you look back to last year, it was a little slower in the summer. And so um, we're hopeful that'll be the case to really allow us to get our arms around this population and help with this program. Yeah, that slowdown's probably very needed to try and take a breath. Right? Yeah, I mean, if you think about when we had 5,000 people in shelter and we were trying to figure out how do we get them out there without them ending up on the streets, you know, one of the big, one of the, the biggest things that happened was the arrival slowed down. And so that really allowed us to start, okay, 15 people are arriving a day instead of 300. 
And when you have 15 people arriving per day, you can go, okay, this, those people that we want to work with, we, can, we have a person now that we can send to go work with them and go talk one-on-one -on -one and figure out what the need is. The cuts that have been made to certain programs to try and help fund services for newcomers here, what would you want the audience to know about those budget cuts? Um, I think we've tried to be very smart. Um, I think we tried to make the cuts in a way where the public would not even notice them had we not said anything about it. You know, we brought uh, we brought the rec centers back online. We brought the DMV back online. Sorry to the DMV, but unfortunately, nobody even asked us about the DMV. We had to tell them that we were bringing the DMV back, and they're like, cool, thanks. But um, we did bring the DMV back online. Um, we did find a way to make the cuts in a way that it wasn't going to, you know, you weren't going to see a big impact of it. So vacancy savings, figure out what positions probably wouldn't even be filled anyways, what projects can we push off for a little bit, get real creative with it. Um, and so we think it's a, a pretty smart way to fund a, you know, what until this budget was a very responsive effort, right? We were on the back foot for months and months and months. We were um, pretty much at the mercy of new arrivals. And, you know, there were many, many a day where we would go, we need a new shelter tomorrow, get it online. And so we could not be in that space anymore. We had to build something sustainable.